Welcome to What's Up Block, the monthly podcast on the blockchain ecosystem. And today it's with Gabriel Kroman from RSK. Hi, Gabriel. Hi, Sid. How are you? Thank you very much for having me here. It's uh, really my pleasure. So who are you, Gabriel? Uh, so my name is Gabriel Kurman. I've been working in the space for the last six years. I'm co-founder of uh, RSK. I'm co-founder of Koi Banks, uh, Reef now. And I've been also been working on the NGO, Latin American Bitcoin and Blockchain NGO, for the last couple of years. Also co-founded a few non-for-profit projects such as La Bitcoineta and Blockchain for Humanity. Uh, so yeah, I've been around for, for a long time and, and working on, on several very exciting uh, projects in Latin America and the rest of the world. So how RSK is different than the other blockchains? Yes, so I, I think the best way to understand RSK is to, to understand where it comes from. Right, so the RSK founders uh, are all from Latin America. And, uh, you know, Latin America has had over, the, over its history a long, um, a huge amount of financial crises and, and financial problems. Argentina, for instance, has had plus 15, uh, sorry, more than 30% inflation over the last 15 years, right? And then we have Venezuela with the currently having a major hyperinflation. So I think the in Latin America, 65% of the population is unbanked and excluded from the current traditional financial system. So that's where RSK comes from. And, and with that mindset, uh, when we understood how blockchain technology and how Bitcoin could transform our society and help us build a more inclusive financial system, we understood that we needed the best of all the technologies that were currently ex existing in, in the ecosystem. So Bitcoin is extremely popular uh, in Latin America as a store of value. We understand that we cannot trust our governments, that we cannot trust our local currencies as a store of value in the long term. And Bitcoin as an alternative to gold, to long term store of value, uh, plays a key role in our society, in the emerging markets. But at the same time, we needed to develop uh, financial services that could be fully automated through smart contracts that could provide micro saving and micro loans and micro remittances and micro e-commerce to the billions that are currently excluded from the current financial system. And for that, we needed smart contracts. For that, we needed Turing Complete platforms. Uh, so when we realized that we didn't want to choose between Ethereum and Bitcoin, that we wanted the best of both worlds, this is what led us to build RSK. So as Nick Savo said uh, in one of his tweets, um, RSK tries to, to, build, to take the best of both worlds. It's the programmability and flexibility of smart contracts supported by the security of the Bitcoin ecosystem and the Bitcoin infrastructure. There are now plenty of blockchains out there. How to make the difference between the good, the bad and the ugly? First of all, I appreciate every single technology that is being built as an open source blockchain, right? Because regardless whether it's good or not, if it is open source, then uh, it's open for the ecosystem to keep on building on it. And, and this is a, a, a go, no go uh, starting point for me. Uh, of course, then if it is uh, not open source, I don't like it and then if it is patented or, or coming from a patent rolled company, I definitely not support it at all. Um, now, from within the open source technologies and the open source blockchains, which in my opinion are the only blockchains that actually should be called uh, like that, um, what we try to do in RSK is not to create a new technology or a new blockchain and then uh, start chasing or building a community. Uh, all blockchains, I mean, that will be successful, will be successful based on their community. And on RSK, what we did is we tried to find 
the most exciting and thrilling communities in the world first and then building technology for them. So that's why RSK decided to be fully compatible with Solidity. So any projects and any developer building smart contracts on Solidity uh, can now also secure their solutions on RSK uh, with the Bitcoin hashing power behind it. Um, so for that reason, the whole you know, Ethereum and Solidity communities are so excited about RSK because it's great to have options. If uh, fees become too expensive, if, if Gasper doesn't work uh, as planned, well, it's always good that those amazing use cases that are reaching, hopefully in the next couple of days, millions of users won't be jeopardized. Every single blockchain project should be blockchain agnostic and make sure that all the effort and the code uh, putting behind it uh, is reaching those users, regardless what blockchain or how many blockchains uh, infrastructure can be can be run on. Um, also, we decided to use Bitcoin or smart Bitcoin, which is a one to one peg to Bitcoin as fuel to run the execution of smart contracts on, on RSK. And for that reason, we have the full support from every single Bitcoiner around the world because basically we are helping Bitcoin to reach its full potential and also be used to run smart contracts. Uh, and a third pillar, we allowed Bitcoin miners with the same hashing power and with the same electricity consumption to also receive fees and make money, whole new revenue stream for them by securing smart contracts. So for that reason, the RSK uh, blockchain platform has full support from the Bitcoin miners around the world. For them, it's an extra revenue stream and makes even more efficient their utilization of hashing power, hardware and electricity. What are the exciting projects uh, built on RSK? Yeah, so uh, there are many projects that are uh, being developed uh, on RSK many of them on logistics. It's, uh, it's going to be a very interesting use case. Uh, there are some other projects working on loyalty programs. Um, but we have, uh, you know, very close to our heart, all those use cases that are really working towards uh, improving our society and having a positive impact. Uh, there is this uh, incubator, uh, decentralized incubator that we built that, uh, with friends around the world that is called Blockchain for Humanity which actually is trying to do that, identify those blockchain use cases, actually regardless whether they are built on RSK or not, uh, but they could have a positive impact in our society. Uh, and, and from Blockchain for Humanity, I can tell you that there are some education projects that I really love, like La Bitcoineta, for instance, that is a Bitcoin minivan that travels around small cities in Latin America educating in high schools and uh, uh, entrepreneurs and municipalities how to use Bitcoin and blockchain technology. Um, there are also projects working towards uh, developing microfinance and financial inclusion. Uh, there's a project called Taiken from the Netherlands that is working on decentralized ID that is also extremely uh, important. Uh, Giveth, it's a project that we really like from the Ethereum ecosystem that is also going to be available on RSK now soon uh, to promote transparent donations that hopefully in the future could also be used as transparency in government budgets. Um, so those are some of the projects I, I, I like the most. I also uh, am a big fan of Elevate Health that uh, will be rewarding uh, people that uh, have a healthy life and, and, and I think there's one application in particular where you can use, uh, you know, your physical activity or you just run a marathon or climb a mountain and use those, those points to be donated on, for charity. I think that's super exciting. Can, I think as, long as, uh, as soon as it is live, I'm going to start training for a marathon. And this is a, a promise that I can make live here in the podcast. Uh, then you can chase me if I if I don't do it. Um, also, there's a project called Shelping that I think is very interesting, which basically what it's trying to do 
is capturing value from advertisement and instead of uh, you know getting corporations wasting money on on ads uh, it's encouraging them to tokenize that value and give it to their customers so they can donate to charities and social projects uh, so it's basically empowering the customers and monetizing that value but put it into charity and, and, and projects with a positive social impact than ads so those are examples of, of projects that uh, we are helping from blockchain for humanity and i would like to invite all the listeners to this podcast that if any of them is willing to develop a blockchain solution with positive social impact or knows a friend that is doing something um, please connect to blockchain for humanity the website it's b4h.world um, and we will do our best to make sure that those projects get invited to roadshows to meetups get media coverage uh, and also hopefully in the future also be able to fund them so they can reach a proof of concept uh, and if there's anyone that is willing to donate and, and help be a mentor to any of these projects around the world uh, also can contact us and, and, and help us make sure that this technology is used for good very exciting indeed and the uh, listeners can contact you on your website yes the website is rsk.co We have to end here, but Gabriel, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. What's Up Block podcast is sponsored by Elevate Health. Elevate Health plans to make far-reaching changes to the way health is tackled today by providing a platform to enable, measure, and reward people for a significant and measurable improvement in their lifestyles. Please visit us at www.elevatehealth.io.